So, good afternoon to all. Uh, so today, I am going to just uh, explain how the calorimetric test can be useful in the assessment of carbonation resistance uh, in concrete mixes. So, here uh, we are going to see with respect to natural carbonation and then accelerated carbonation, how the ca calorimetric test is useful uh, in the assessment of carbonation. As you know, carbonation is a natural process where the atmospheric carbon dioxide reacts with the hydrated cement products like uh, amorphous uh, calcium silicate hydrates and then uh, crystalline uh, portlandite and then ettringite. So, here uh, these compounds will uh, convert into calcium carbonate and then uh, uh, water, uh, the byproduct will be water. So, here uh, there will be a reduction in alkalinity, this reduced alkalinity will uh, start from the surface of the concrete and then it travels inside and reaches the steel cementitious interface. So, when the pH at the steel cementitious interface reduced below a certain level uh, of 9 or 11, so there is a possibility of uh, depletion of this uh, passivation layer and uh, due to that uh, the corrosion can initiate in the concrete. So, and also there are uh, not enough uh, performance uh, based uh, specifications which are available uh, at the site to evaluate the carbonation resistance of the mixes. So, few uh, since the process is very slow, we need to have some accelerated test methods to assess the performance of the prescribed concrete mixes for a particular project uh, in the site uh, level. So, uh, there are various accelerated carbonation test uh, standards available. So, one among the standard uh, is uh, Rylum CPC 18 which is mostly used in the European countries uh, where uh, there will be uh, different sizes of uh, specimens will be useful. For example, uh, the Rylum CPC 16 prescribes 150 mm cross 150 mm cross uh, 700 mm specimen also and here in uh, our uh, lab we are going to use this uh, 100 mm cross 100 mm cross 500 mm specimen for the concrete uh, test. So, and also for mortar test, we used to have this 40 mm, uh, 40 mm cross 160 mm uh, prism specimens for the continuous monitoring of uh, carbonation depth. This kind of uh, specimens are preferred over this cube specimens because we can continue the carbonation test in the same specimens over a period of time. For the calculation of this carbonation coefficient, we need to have the carbonation depth measurement at various intervals. So, this measurements can be taken in the same uh, concrete uh, prism over a period of time. For example, this accelerated test can be started after 28 days of exposure and we will have one more test at 56 days, then 90 days and then 112 days we will have uh, carbonation uh, depth measurements. So, uh, using for this the entire uh, study we can use the same prism specimens for the uh, carbonation depth measurement which could be useful in uh, the stand which could be a standard way for uh, measuring the carbonation uh, depth. So, here uh, I am going to use two types of indicators uh, for uh, this carbonation test uh, assessment. So, one is a phenolphthalein indicator which is a standard uh, uh, test method available in site uh, also. So, the other one is rainbow indicator uh, which is having a working range of pH 5 to pH 13. So, this uh, phenolphthalein indicator uh, will uh, show colorless when the pH goes below 9. This rainbow indicator uh, will turn into green when the pH goes below 9. So, normally in our uh, concretes, whenever the pH is uh, reducing below 9, we will say that uh, the corrosion, initi corrosion is initiated. So, the carbonation depth measured is also uh, an indication of uh, the portions which are having pH lesser than 9. So, here we are going to just uh, show how we will do the measurement of uh, carbonation depth using these two indicators. So, uh, now uh, I will just uh, show you how this uh, small mortar prisms can be broken into uh, segments and then uh, which can be useful in the continuous monitoring of this carbonation depth over a period of time. So, we will just use this uh, uh, flexural uh, test setup where we can break the mortar prism into two and then we will spray the phenolphthalein indicator and then rainbow indicator on the freshly broken surfaces on the two different pieces and then we will measure the carbonation depth. So, after the prism is broken, so we are just uh, going to spray the phenolphthalein indicator over this. So, this is the freshly broken surface. This kind of breaking is preferable than a uh, socket uh, just to avoid uh, the calcium uh, leaching which could possibly occur during the socketing. The carbonation front will get disturbed when there is a socket has been done. So, uh, and the, the spraying of the indicator should be done at once uh, to avoid any other external carbonation uh, which could possibly occur. 
So now I am going to spray uh, the phenoxyl indicator over the freshly broken surface. So uh, that should be just uh, kept it uh, slightly away from the fractured surface and then just uh, we should spray that uh, over the broken surfaces. So you could see the carbonated portions are uh, staying colorless and then uh, the non-carbonated portion will be uh, in pink color uh, as expected. So this is how uh, we could uh, find the colorless and then uh, so the colorless zone uh, will be the carbonated zone and then uh, the center pink zone will be the non-carbonated zone. Then we have to make the measurements using this uh, vernier calipers to determine this uh, carbonation depth uh, on the all four faces of the uh, mortar prism. So normally uh, we used to have uh, the measurements like uh, at least three measurements on each face faces. So I will use the uh, vernier caliper and then measure the carbonation depth from the surface of this uh, mortar prism and I will just take the measurements until uh, where uh, I am going to see the pink color of the concrete. So I will just uh, explain that measurement method. So using the vernier calipers I just took the measurements like uh, now I am just taking the measurements from on each faces. So similarly on the all four faces of the mortar prism. So from all four faces I am uh, getting a carbonation depth of uh, 9.5. So the mean value will be calculated uh, based on the four measurements uh, using this four different uh, on all four faces of the concrete. So uh, use, while using a phenomenal indicator it is recommended to have a mask and then gloves always since uh, it can be a carcinogenic agent. So it is always recommended to have a mask while doing this uh, phenomenal indicator test. So similarly I will just show how the rainbow indicator uh, performs uh, for measuring the carbonation depth. So this is rainbow indicator where you can see. Uh, the working range will be 5 to 13. So here the non-carbonated zone will be the violet one. So the carbonated zone uh, which will be expected to have a green color over uh, the uh, surface. So we will just uh, spray this uh, as we did for uh, phenoxyl indicator and then uh, we will measure the carbonation depth uh, as similar to uh, what we did for uh, phenoxyl indicator. I am going to use the another freshly broken surface. Here you could see that uh, the portion which is uh, non-carbonated turns into deep violet and then uh, the portions which are partially carbonated and then fully carbonated has a mixture of green color and then uh, pink color which is evident. So uh, this color uh, change of green represents that the system is completely carbonated. So again here uh, we can measure uh, using the vernier calipers as we did for uh, phenolphthalein indicator. So similarly uh, this was uh, this measurement was taken at uh, 28 days of uh, exposure similarly the subsequent measurements will take will be taken at uh, 56 days, 90 days and then uh, 112 days. So uh, using the Tutis model we will just fit this uh, mean carbonation depth at this 3 or 4 different ages and then we will just calculate the carbonation coefficient uh, of this accelerator carbonation test. So based upon the relationship between the natural and the accelerator carbonation test, we will derive the natural carbonation coefficient uh, uh, and then we can substitute that uh, natural carbonation coefficient in this Tutis model to calculate the service life of the concrete system using carbonation induced corrosion. So, uh, so similarly for concrete specimens, we can uh, take slices uh, at each, each time interval uh, using shear cutters and then do the measurements as I did for uh, mortar specimens.